So we had a bunch of new people coming by the vlog last week. Obviously, we have a Razer microphone to give away today, and I'm going to tell you who won that in just a second. But I wanted to show you who we are, where we are, and what we're doing here at Engon. This is massive entertainment in Malmö, Sweden. Now, as you can see, it is literally freezing out here. This canal, quite frozen. Anyway, it's time to get inside. Damn, that's cold. All right, chances are, if you were tuning into this video, you probably want to find out who won this Razer Siren X microphone that we're giving away. And you know what? If you'd showed up to the stream yesterday, you'd already know. For transparency's sake, and so no one could ever accuse me of giving the microphone away to someone that I knew, a friend or a coworker or that sort of thing, we actually did the drawing of the giveaway live on Twitch yesterday. Should we start it, Gabe? Go. Go? Well, I was uh, like watching the stream at the delay. Oh, look, it's picking names. Who's the random winner? I can't see it. It's game blocked. game for you to be. It's blocked by my head. Now we've tried sending you a private message, but we couldn't do that because you haven't claimed your channel name yet. So what you'll need to do is make sure that you send the Ingon channel a private message and then we'll organize how to get this microphone to you. And before all you other people go sending the Ingon channel a private message, we know who won, so that's not gonna work. That would be twitch.tv slash Ingon if you're not following already and want to make sure that you're around if we do that sort of thing in the future. Also, why would you want to miss out on absolute pro gaming moments like this. No! No! For those of you that are new to this whole Engon thing, whether you've come for the giveaway that we did on YouTube, or you just kind of fell into it through finding us through our podcasts or on Twitch, I think it's very important about who we are and what that connection is. There were so many nice comments on the YouTube video, but some of the things that kept coming up were related to people thanking Uplay for highlighting this new YouTube channel and that sort of thing. Now there's a very clear reason why you saw that video in the Uplay client. The client that you open on your PC is actually developed here at Massive Entertainment. In fact, if we walked outside that door right now, we'd be able to find the team that is working on the Uplay client day to day. The other question that we often get on this channel is what does Engon stand for? Simply put, Engon is the term used by the industry to denote an any-sided polygon n being the variable for any number. Admittedly, it's been a long time since I've dabbled in any 3D art, and the term n-gon probably means an entirely different thing to the industry as it stands now. I'm by no means an authority on the subject, but there are many people who are that work right in this building because it's a game studio. So what I'm gonna try and do now is chat to a few of my environment art friends and find out exactly what the term n-gon means in the current game dev landscape. Coffee. I think coffee is how we do this. What is an Ingon? I have no idea. <laughs> you have no idea? <laughs> Magnus is the wrong person to ask. No, you know, come on. I honestly do not know. I, uh, assuming it's a polygon <laughs> with uh, M numbers of vertices. Yeah. That nice. is exactly yes. it. <laughs> yeah. For 3D artists, it tends to max out at four. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so everything above four is an n-gon, okay. basically. But technically a four-sided polygon is still an n-gon, where n is equal to four. Maybe. That's not yeah, wrong, I don't right? really think it's about it all that much. <laughs> it seems like it would make That yeah, would make sense. sense. But you would call a three-sided polygon a tri or that sort of thing. Right? And a four-sided one a quad. I mean, in the game engine, it'll be all tries anyways. Mm. Okay. But it didn't used to be, right? So no, I think it... A lot of times it used to be, before right. it just couldn't handle the import okay. of when they were non-triangulated. Alright, because I'm thinking back like, gosh, like eight years now. Back in my day. Back in my day, yeah. back like when GameArtisans.org was like the jam. Yeah. It was always like you have to have perfectly quoted meshes and stuff mm -hmm. and that sort of thing and mm -hmm. like really good distribution of uh, mm -hmm. polygon yeah. density and that sort of thing. Yeah. What has changed since then to now? Character-wise, sure. I think N-Gons is still kind of a no-go, mainly because, maybe not everywhere, but at least on the parts that bend. Right. Or something like that, because they're animated and skinned and mm. stuff. Uh, on the environment side, we don't really care anymore. Like before, but back... you don't care? 
I don't care either way. I just, right, he yeah. gives me stuff and I place it. Was the coffee at least good? Yeah. <laughs> All right. And I get to sit here. It's weird. All right, you're fired. <laughs> Chris, Damn you, it. you can go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Magnus. Okay. So triangles with characters and stuff. I remember that being a huge thing where you would have like, if you had like long triangles or that sort of thing, you'd get weird like animation pinching and that, yeah. that kind of stuff, right? You do still, kind of. Mm. When you uh, make high poly meshes and stuff, you kind of want to sometimes at least stay away from triangles okay. especially end guns because you get like pinching in areas you don't want them okay i mean it used to be more of an issue before but these days i don't think it's that much of an issue anymore like we use brush, we make a high poly and then we just sometimes we just decimate the whole thing mm -hmm. poly reducer and then the topology the edge flow of all the polygons and stuff it's it's totally messy but right. like for static objects like rocks and you know, it, we, it doesn't really matter as long as the, the end result is good. There's what, there's, um, I remember, is it Unreal that has like simply gone integration? Or yeah, exactly. That sort it's of kind of, yeah, the exact same. Like, it just reduces the polys just automatically. And Do we have those tools in Snowdrop? Like simply gone or uh, anything like that? Simply gone is integrated into Snowdrop, yeah. Cool. You can, I think you can see it during the splash screens. Nice. Even, yeah. Cool. What do, you, what do you do? Do you have any end gones in any of your meshes? Or you're like, nah. All the time. All the time? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Yeah, all the time. Because uh, okay. these days, uh, I don't know, even the 3D programs, they don't seem to care all that much. Okay. Uh, so I have them all the time. There's this stigma, you know, it should be all quads, shouldn't use end guns. Mm. That was a long time ago. Right. Yeah, it's not really the same anymore. You can do kind of, and then just let the, you know, the engine handle it. So there are still people that have probably like never put ingons in your meshes. Oh yeah, there are plenty. All right, but you're cool. Yeah, we're cool. All right, are you ready for D and D on Saturday? I am super Dude. ready. It's gonna be on. <laughs> Hopefully that gives you a little bit of an insight into what ingon means when we talk about it in game development terms. But the cheesy answer for us is at least twofold. Firstly, at least I think Engon sounds kind of cool. I mean, designing a logo like that where it doesn't have to be super wide aspect ratio is kind of fun. But if we're getting really philosophical, the N, I think at least, can stand for the diverse and infinitely variable amount of content and types of content that we can have on this channel. Admittedly, kind of fluffy, but elegant, I guess? If you are watching this video straight away on Thursday the 8th of February, we're going to be doing what seems to be becoming a bit of a thing with streaming indie games. Tomorrow, we're going to be trying out Tooth and Tail for the very first time. It's made by the team at Pocket Watch Games, which is a small team in San Diego led by Andy Schatz. Now, you may already be familiar with Pocket Watch Games with their title Monaco, which came out a little while back. I actually didn't realize it was them that made it. But Gabe and I are going to sit down tomorrow and do some co-op Tooth and Tail, which I'm really excited about. So join us for that over on twitch.tv slash ngon. I've also been looking at what Pocket Watch have been doing recently, and I saw that Andy has been streaming over on twitch.tv slash pocketwatch. So if watching developers fix network bugs is your type of thing, head on over there, hit follow, and check them out next time they're on. Now, if you don't want to miss anything, you're going to want to head over to our Twitch, our Twitter, our Discord, our SoundCloud, all that stuff. We'll leave links down below so you can get hooked up there. We're also going to try and do a giveaway once a month, so I really don't want you to miss any of those. That would kind of suck. Before I head off today, unfortunately, I have to tell you that we're not going to be around next week. Gabe and I are going to be in Paris for work stuff, so Ingon's going to be silent, and I'm really sorry. I feel bad. I promise we'll be back the week after with more streams, more YouTube stuff, hopefully some more podcasts once we get the embed issue fixed, and I guess at that point we'll be getting kind of close to our next giveaway. All right, that's it for today. We'll see you tomorrow for some Rats vs. Rats stabby stuff. Bye.